Hi everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions and today I'm going to go over two of the features of the Asus BRT AC828 business Wi-Fi router. This is a dual WAN router. There are two features of this router that I'm going to be going over. The first one is the captive portal element. This is where you can set up login pages as well as accounts to allow only certain individuals that you know about onto your network by giving them a username and password. You can also enable free Wi-Fi mode, which means anyone in the vicinity of the router can connect to the internet. And you can also use the Facebook Wi-Fi. The second part of this video will be going over the failover aspect of this. A primary use case of having a failover on a router is if you have a primary connection, such as a fiber, which is 100 up, 100 down in many cases, you might have more, you might have less, you have a primary connection, you're working away, it gets to about 11.30 in the morning, so prime time for businesses to be uploading, downloading and actually using it, and all of a sudden it dies. The internet is gone. Well, in the meantime, you're going to be calling up your ISP to say, why is it broken? You know, is there an outage and all that stuff? But in the interim, you can have it so that you have a 3G, 4G dongle plugged in the USB in the front and that it will automatically fail over or switch to this secondary connection which will be a mobile connection. Two completely different networks. It will use one when you're down, allowing you to stay online and ultimately save what you're doing, sync it to the cloud, send that last email to let people know, okay, we're getting network problems at the moment. Then you can focus on fixing the primary connection while still staying online. For a business, this is invaluable. Let's begin. So this is from the perspective of somebody who already has a modem set up. Let's say it's the basic one that's given to you by your ISP when you purchase a connection from them. To get all of this connected, you have two main options. The first one is to connect from your modem from one of the LAN ports into the WAN port of the Asus router. The second option is if you have fiber. Now you can actually replace the existing modem router with the BRT AC828, but you do need to use the LAN port and set up the VLAN 10. First of all, you'll need to power on the device plug it into the wall, plug it into the main one. Then you want to connect a cable going from one of the ethernet ports directly into a laptop or PC. Then browse to 192.168.1.1. So the main way your laptop or PC will see internet is through this device, which obviously we haven't set up yet, but we're going to get onto that right now. When you've gone to the gateway address, the 192.168.1.1, you'll be presented with a login screen. This is basically just welcome to the device, please sign up, sign in, and then you'll get past the login display. Once you've done all the initial setup, which I won't go into because I'm sure you'll be able to do that yourself, please be advised, I'm not gonna go through the exact network setup for this particular router, just the concept of the failover and the captive portals. So if you're struggling to get the network actually going on the router itself at all, I would suggest contacting the ISP or manufacturer that you're with, and they should be able to give you at least a website that will talk you through or show you through the various settings you'll need to configure the WAN or the wide area network. But again, in my example, I'm using fiber. I'm based in New Zealand and my ISP is Vodafone. I've configured ethernet port five on VLAN 10 to accept that port as the incoming WAN connection. So if anytime you see ethernet five, that's my primary WAN source. We're now going to configure the captive portals. So first of all, what you're going to need to do is navigate on the left hand side to where it says guest networks. This is where you're going to be setting up everything to do with guest people coming on to your network. When you're here, you'll be presented with the free Wi-Fi section. This is the section to configure what the user who wants to use your free Wi-Fi with no login, no nothing. As long as they're in the area, they'll be able to use your free Wi-Fi. At this point, you can define things such as the brand name, as well as the exact terms and conditions, how long it takes for the connection to time out. So in this example, you could have it set to 15 minutes, which means they can't be continuously connected to the network, which means your connection won't be taken advantage of and constantly be downloading things and X, Y, and Z. You can also limit the bandwidth, i.e. you only want people to download five megabits a second down and up which ensures that users can't come in and consume your entire bandwidth of your network just because they feel like watching that video in 8K. The landing page can also be configured. This is the page that loads immediately after the user connects to the free Wi-Fi. More often than not, businesses will use this page to display advertisements 
or their main website page in general. The login page is very configurable. You can configure the brand name, background image, and the exact terms and conditions. So basically everything that should be configured can be configured. You need to make sure you have this switch at the top turned on because you can configure this to your heart's content, but if you don't have it enabled, then it's kind of pointless. So in summary, you can do landing page, upload, download limitations, the connection timeout time, the terms and conditions, an optional passcode, the 5 GHz SSID name, the 2.4 GHz SSID name, the brand name, the background image, and more. So it's quite a versatile page you can configure. Once you've finally decided what you're going to call it and what the terms and conditions are and how restrictive you want it to be, click on apply and enable at the bottom of the screen. Once it's finally applied and enabled, you will see that it becomes entry number six on your guest network table. You can also go in and edit the configuration at any point in the future, but by default, guest network free Wi-Fi is normally entry number six on the guest network table that you can see on the far right tab. The next portal that we're going to be talking about is the captive portal by definition. The scenario that you'd probably want to use this second one is if you were a hotel reception, for example, giving out the Wi-Fi to guests with a username and password type authentication system. So again, you can see you can configure the brand name, the 2.4 gigahertz SSID, the 5 gigahertz one, the idle timeout, the connection timeout, and a maximum download speed and maximum upload speed, as well as a landing page. You'll see on this example and my screen record that I do not press the little circle with the dot in it for the maximum download speed and maximum upload speed. Therefore, even though I've entered five megabits a second, it will not apply that because I haven't enabled it. I thought it would be good to mention in the video because if I make the mistake, then other people probably will too. So there you go. You also get a few templates to choose from here with the Captive Portal main login screen. Again, all of these are customizable. You can change the text, the area, the location of each of the elements. So the logo, you can move around the login button, the two input fields for account and password, as well as the description underneath the main heading. Also, you can do the terms of service saying to everyone, hey, look, you might be limited here. We might track what you're going on and all that stuff. That can all be mentioned in the terms and conditions. So it's a good customizable area to go and play around with and see what you feel like applying or not in some cases. This is for the more structured and OK, we're going to give 20 usernames and passwords out for the guests in this way. It's not free Wi-Fi, so everyone can't jump on here unless they've got the username and password. It's the more customized and structured way of handling a captive portal. So as you can see here, I'm playing around with the main header, the descriptive text underneath, and just the size of things, the color, and what they're called. You don't even have to have one of the templates, but I like to use one as a foundation, then tweak it by moving the logo left and right, and you'll get used to it. It's quite friendly to use, you're going to get this going in a matter of minutes. When you've made it look all fancy and to your liking, you'll then need to press the next button at the bottom of the screen. This account settings page is where you're going to configure each and every one of the accounts to be used to enable access to your network. Simply type in the username and password that you want users to use. In my case, I'm going to choose guest123 for both the username and password, which in a real production environment you obviously wouldn't do, but this is for demo purposes. When you've figured out which ones you want to have in there, type in the username and password and click on the plus icon on the right hand side. This will add it to the directory. And when you're finished, press finish. You will then see the familiar applying settings one, which will go through and take a minute or so and just push through and apply both the portal page, the design you've chosen and the accounts that you have set up. You can also use Facebook Wi-Fi with this device. I've included a link in the description that will go over the specifics of this. So let's see what this looks like in the real world. So take out your phone, Go to the Wi-Fi just as you normally would to connect to any other Wi-Fi network and you'll see that I've made the test Wi-Fi one. I click on this and up comes a what they call slash page, which I would normally refer to as a splash page because it's where you're going to end up. But anyway, a page will open up. You can see that it's got the terms and conditions. You press accept, you press connect and you're in. You're using the Wi-Fi to your heart's content.
What I'm showing you now is the connection being throttled. You can see it's five megabits a second up and five down. This has been tested with the speedtest.net app. With the captive portal, same applies. I've made a test captive portal connection that you can again see in the guest network table on the Asus device. This time though, you have to type in your username and password. So that guest one, two, three and guest one, two, three again. When you click it, you'll be in the network, no problem. The difference is though, on the free Wi-Fi, I've throttled the connection to five down and five up. With the captive portal though, with the username and password, it is not throttled. Which kind of makes sense because you don't want the average Joe on the street that walks past your house to be able to connect to free Wi-Fi and download a hell of a lot and use up all your bandwidth. But you really don't mind so much if guests are paying to stay in your hotel, but they're using the internet. It's not the end of the world because they're already a paying customer and you know who they are based on the login. All of this is customizable. You don't have to take what I'm saying. You can change this, you can play around with it and you can see what works for you and your business. Now onto the failover. As I'm using the 3G 4G dongle to fail over, make sure you click on 3G 4G dongle on the left hand side. The next most important thing to do is make sure the enable USB mode slider is configured on. If it's off, you won't be able to use the USB mode. That means anything you have plugged in will be irrelevant. After you've enabled the USB mode, you can then configure the authentication and various other settings on the dongle if your provider has given you such information. In my case though, I just pressed on, I did auto with no authentication and it worked like a charm. Again, check with your provider before you try and fail over to a mobile network as there may be settings to change on the router. Now that you've got the backup sorted, click on WAN on the left hand side, that's wide area network. You now need to configure it so that when connection one fails, it will fail over to connection two, AKA your USB dongle. When you're in the WAN internet connection window, you will see a series of tabs at the top. Make sure to click on the dual WAN tab. When you're here, you'll see your primary WAN, in my case, ethernet LAN port five, and secondary WAN USB, which is the USB dongle 3G 4G and I've selected the fail over mode. Obviously before you do any of this you need to make sure that enable dual WAN toggle is on. Once you've enabled the dongle or the backup connection and you've enabled the relevant USB mode or things that have to do with the secondary connection and you've also then gone in configured primary WAN 1 and put your one as the secondary in there as well so that they both will work together and made sure that failover's on there. In theory, if you set it up correctly, which I'm sure you have, when connection one dies, or doesn't appear to be there anymore, connection two will take its place. As you're seeing on the screen now, connection one is showing that a cable is unplugged, i.e. it can't find a connection, and within a minute or so, at the very most, it will fail over. As you can see there, connection two is now connected. And that is all there is to fail over. That simple change, that simple addition, brings very effective results. And if you're a small medium business, then hey, it speaks for itself. Having a primary connection die goes to the secondary one in a minute tops. Now it's up to you to decide if this is the router for you. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or any feedback you'd like to give me, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching.